My question is, um, um, there's so much talk now, of, and I came to this late as you all saw, so this, this may be less or more or less relevant to repeating something or, or what, but there's so much talk nowadays about sort of global networks and hybridization and all this kind of stuff, and I just wonder if there's a risk that we kind of lose track of uh, actually making sure we're learning about you know, things inherent to particular places or just learning in depth about other places. Uh, and I'm sort of wondering your thoughts about about this sort of trend. I'm talking a lot, so maybe yeah. somebody. <laughs> Anybody from uh, from Europe want to say something to that? Are you I, I have trouble understanding the the questions. To okay. Be, to be honest. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll try to I'll try to repeat them then for you, uh, Mikhail. So this 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 question is about uh, is there a danger? as I understand it, is there a danger when we look at big global phenomena that we lose track of the uh, particularities of, of, of spaces and, and they're, um, you had a, you had a much more precise word. Well, yeah, especially, I'll, I guess I'll shout to be heard. Um, so the, there's so much talk now about like networks and sort of cross-cultural hybridization and networks of, networks of back and forth between places is there a danger we lose track of the things that are inherent, which admittedly is a loaded term, but the things that are actually inherent to particular places, and we don't, we fail to learn in depth about those other places. So I just, just, uh, Mikhail, Mikhail, you want to talk about that? Because I think you mentioned it in your remarks. I, I, I think so, yes. Um, <laughs> I, I, th I think the, sh the short answer is yes, there, there, there is that danger. Although, um, I, it's, it's, it's a common criticism level that global history these days, right? And it, I think it's, um, it, it, it is based on an understanding of global history as being a particularly encompassing history or, or like world history, a, a, a kind of history that aims for universal coverage of processes. And, and Perhaps in Europe more than in the United States, actually a lot of a lot of um, people who who use the label global history would probably object to to, to being um, classified as as such, and and many of them are very interested in, in very specific local local processes. So I think um, things processes networks. Uh, can be very local and, and often have a sort of anchorage in a, in a specific place. It, it's more about the kinds of questions that you that you ask. Um, so, 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 so you can write a global history of you know a, a small town neighborhood in Ohio, I'm sure, in 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 writing you know how, how global large processes affected everyday people's lives. In, in, in this specific place, um, so 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 I think um, a a global history well done should not run the danger that you describe. Um, although I I concur with you that that some of it actually does run that danger. Yeah. Um. So can I can I just also add that? Well, I mean I think uh, for me. Um, that's the promise of, of urban history uh, to change the conversation in global history is to, to it, it enables you to nail down global processes as they unfold in a particular space and to understand how on a very small scale they interleave with local processes as well and I think uh, for someone who works on the you know in, in the imperial setting i think in in the cities that, that i look at the fascinating or the, the the promise of the city is to be able to understand how these new global cultures or networks are expressed and how they affect the places that have often been quite locally produced up until that point so I think they're complementary, really. I think I think that's why, for me, why global and urban can come together because they're they're so useful in nailing down what can be a, a sort of free-floating global project. 
Yeah, I'll just I'll quickly add, and then we have two other questions. That, that this is one of the this is the big challenge. I mean, uh, th this field, this hybrid field, as I'm seeing it, contains enormous numbers of challenges, and one of them is this conceptual one of just how you take these two. Uh, I mean, Mikhail really put it very well earlier. Two very different uh, uh, academic cultures, really different languages. I mean, I hear the word processes coming up over and over again uh, as if we are global, global urban history historians, and some urban history historians use them too, but I, I'm wondering, you know, for example, whether that is one of the first things we ought to jettison. Um, certainly it's something I'm thinking a lot about lately. Uh, so th those kinds of, but those, 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 are, those are very challenging things to do and very challenging things to think about. Um, uh, first, right up here and then uh, in the back.